Chapter 4 Why Won't Sauron Just Grow Up? The rest of their journey was uneventful, or nearly so. There were some elves who appeared at the ends of the halls and began to curse at Sauron, and probably would have caused a scene similar to that with Feanor. It was interesting to note, however, that it seemed as though they could not leave the halls they were in. Of course, that did not stop their voices from traveling. Haldir tried to block out the vulgar language that reached his ears, but with as much of it that was going on, that was rather hard. Until that day, he had thought it would have been impossible to have that many curse words together in one sentence. He reflected that one learns new things every day. Sauron did not seem to mind what was being said at all. He looked at the elves who were yelling at him, and then turned away as though they were nothing but rocks. All the same, Haldir thought that he saw a very wicked light to his eyes, as though his appearance was a facade to his true feelings. Haldir didn't like the thought at all. Finally, after what had seemed like hours, they came to the end of the hall. Before them, a huge chamber opened up, so large that Haldir could not see the top or the sides. It was as though they had suddenly walked into the middle of a plain. Unlike the halls where the lighting was done partly by torches positioned high on the walls and partly from the spirits of the elves, here there were hundreds of little blue lights hanging on silver chains from the ceiling. They were dull giving off a faint sphere of light that did not make the floor easy to see. Aldir made sure to stay near the group, knowing that if he paused too long, the darkness would eat them up and he would be lost. And with his luck concerning directions, he would probably end up walking in circles there for the rest of eternity. They walked on for a while more, when suddenly Haldir began to see other little lights ahead. At first they were just dots in the dark, but then, after walking some more, they began to grow larger. They were faint and shifty, and he watched them as they would slowly dim and go out. Haldir watched the lights curiously for a couple minutes, and then he hurried a little so that he was walking next to Nemo. Those lights, he began once he got the courage to speak. What are they? Nemo turned to him to answer. They are the elves who are being released. Haldir cocked an eyebrow. They are? Then why are they fading? Because they are getting a body, their spirits seem to fade as their forms become more physical. Uh-huh. Finally, they stopped. In front of them was a line of souls, all patiently waiting for their turn. Ahead of the line was the wall, into which eight tunnels were carved. Haldir only guessed this from the fact that at these points the darkness became thicker. He watched with interest as eight spirits were taken from the line and led to the tunnels. There would stand a Maya blocking the way. Then Haldir assumed that some questions were asked, after which the Maya moved aside, and the elf would begin to walk down the tunnel, slowly disappearing into the gloom. Cheery little way to get a body back, Haldir thought to himself, forgetting Nemo for a moment. Nemo did look down at him in a reprimanding way, but it was Sauron who spoke, addressing Haldir for the first time. <laughs> you don't say... Looks like they're all being sent off to damnation. Not that such a thought really bothers me much. Haldir turned to him in horror. You can read my thoughts too, he cried. Sauron looked at him and shrugged. Trust me, I'm not trying to. It just happens. Spinning back around to Nemo, Haldir looked at him hopefully. He won't always be able to do that, will he? He started, frowning. I'm not sure. Haldir shivered internally. The thought of having Sauron being able to tell what he was thinking at all times was not pleasant. Oh, that's not very nice, Sauron said. Stop doing that! Haldir shouted, causing a couple of people ahead of them to stare and whisper. I already told you I can't. It's an Einor thing. I can't stop it. He shook his head. Do you have any idea how annoying it was when I was in Holland with all those elves, all the time hearing them think, I hope these robes aren't too feminine, or, Oh, I wonder how my hair is, he said, flopping his hands around limply with a feigned, worried look on his face. 
Then he quickly dropped his arms, his expression falling also. I swear, drove me absolutely insane. You're sure that you weren't insane beforehand? Haldir hissed, his temper, which for a long amount of years had been considerably cool, for some reason starting to heat up again. Sauron actually looked surprised, as though he was unsure about how to handle the situation. He furrowed his brow, but did not really look displeased, and crossed his arms. Well, no, he said finally, taking a couple steps forward as the line moved up. It then occurred to Haldir that it had probably been a very long time since somebody had talked back to him in that manner. Anybody who had done so earlier, be it Feanor or even Nemo, had known Sauron already and were definitely entitled to aim some derogatory comments at him, considering what sort of things Sauron had probably done to them personally. Haldir had not really had any personal grievance that he held against Sauron, as they had. Of course, when he had been alive, he had hated him with the hate that all free people had felt. But that had faded in his time in the halls, just like every other feeling he had ever felt. Now, although he was well aware that he should hate Sauron, he couldn't honestly say he did. He, in typical recent fashion, felt simple indifference. That being the case, Sauron more than likely felt the same towards him. So it was understandable, Haldir supposed, that when he had implied that Sauron was a raving lunatic to his face, Sauron could be a little taken aback by it. After coming to that conclusion, Haldir just shrugged. None of them talked as they slowly made their way to the head of the line. Eventually, the last group had gone through, and Sauron and Haldir were ushered forward. Nemo, however, did not move. Haldir turned to Nemo, wondering what he was doing. Once you get outside, you will find some people waiting for you. They will take you to where you need to go. Also, keep in mind what happened back there, Nemo said, obviously referring to Feanor. There are people in Valinor who would not be pleased to see him. Sauron turned to Nemo from looking off into space, seeming to understand that he was being spoken about. Me? Yes, Nemo said. What, is that a surprise or something? No, not really, Sauron admitted. Anyway, Nemo continued, It would be wise to keep his identity a secret. It will help give you peace. You aren't coming? Haldir asked him, surprised. Nemo's face actually turned up in a suppressed smile, and Haldir swore that he heard him give a precursor to a laugh. Even Sauron looked surprised at the sound. Are you kidding? He's all yours. He hudged Haldir, who was not feeling particularly good after that comment, on towards the tunnels. You'll do fine. Don't worry so much. With that said, he turned around and headed back off into the dark, fading into it until he vanished from sight. Once he was gone, Haldir turned and looked at the tunnels. Sauron was already in front of one, and he seemed to be taking care of himself, so Haldir went to the only open spot he could find. He stopped in front of the cloaked Maya, and, since it was true that he was slightly on the small side, looked up at her. She looked at him for a second with a dull expression on her face as though she was ready to get this over with. Name? She said, staring off into space directly over Haldir's head. Haldir. From where do you hail? Lothlorien. Ethnic background? Sylvan. Was your death related to Feanor? War, grief, or other? War? Haldir said slowly, thinking the first choice a little odd. What do you plan to do in Valinor? Haldir glanced over a row at Sauron. I'm going to have to look after him, he said a little sadly. But I plan to have an otherwise normal life. He almost thought the Maya's stony appearance might have moved slightly at his comment. Good luck. She then stepped aside and pointed down the hall, continuing to speak mechanically. Follow the tunnel until the end. Try to concentrate on the memories from your life. It will help the process of regenerating a body. Have a nice life. 
Then she waved her hand slightly, beckoning Haldir on. 